Judaism to me, Yiddishkeit to me, is my purpose, and I think all of our purposes, and even if we're not Jewish, and we spoke about this before, the idea to bring more goodness, more love, more godliness to the world. Now, we could come up with our own ideas, that's great, but Judaism has a great track record. And throughout uh, history and throughout from the Torah, we have unbelievable gifts, and I'm inspired every day by learning. I love uh, sharing that with others and hopefully inspiring others as well. Uh, now, I was born into it, right? right? Um, I grew up in a Chabad house. Uh, I, you know, from a young age, I was asked to stand up and say the Devar Torah <laughs> and, and do it. Um, and maybe it's not everyone, for everyone so obvious, but for, for me, it's always been, uh, I want to share the beauty that I see in Yiddishkeit with others. So how would you how would you sell it to someone who's that's that's two different audiences one who doesn't know much about it and yeah. someone else who's been jaded by it someone who's been uh, yes. through it and says I know exactly what Judaism is and what you're selling is a crock of shit right um, so it depends who you're talking to let's Listen, talk about yes. someone who hasn't experienced Shabbos right right we today with social media you know everyone's addicted to their devices we have huge problems with relationships in the world. Um, Kids and parents aren't seeing eye to eye, um, not getting along, busy, distracted. Everyone, even if you're in a good place, everyone's so distracted and so busy. We're busier than we've ever been. We're expected to be in touch with people. Like the gift of Shabbos is the biggest gift we could give to ourselves. And I, I talk, I, and so many people have shared with me after, you know, thinking about it, like, I wish I could. And it's such a scary step. Like, how do I? just unplug for 25 hours. Like, will the world forgive me? <laughs> you know, will I forgive myself? So that's a very big hurdle. And like my encouragement to people is you don't have to. You could start for one hour. Anyone could start for one hour. You could literally light the candles, sit down with your family, but you're gonna eat dinner anyway, right? Hopefully it's kosher, but, right? <laughs> so make the kiddush and everyone shuts off their phone and no one touches the TV for one whole hour. And I think that if you really did it, you're going to say, this is nice. <laughs> <laughs> let's do another half hour. And let's do this until tomorrow morning. All right, tomorrow's a new day from when we, the sun sets. And I've, I've guided a lot of people to actually do this. Some people have gone all the way. Some haven't. Some right. won't. But... The gift of Shabbos, of sitting around the table and talking, just talking, and no one's looking at their phone. And I'm guilty. Let me tell you something. I'm always on my phone. I'm addicted to my phone. <laughs> if it's not Shabbos, right? It's, it's, a, it's a gift. It's beautiful. Oh, and, and doing something like singing songs as a family together. Who does that? Who has, you know, that's beautiful. So when people I've encountered and I've watched them grow, and, and they've taken the gift of Shabbos. Okay, so I so think it's an easy right. sell. Now, well, certainly Shabbos yeah. is an easy sell as you go right. to... Okay, then there's other things, you know. You, and, and, and there's some things that I struggle finding the beauty in myself, and that's okay. It's harder for me to sell right. something that I, I struggle with myself. Right? And so if you took that deeper meaning in terms of, okay, Shabbos makes sense, you know, there's a point in time where, for example, um, pigs had real risks of disease, but now with... Um, you know, advancements and food investments and right. how we make the food, that has less of a risk. So, so kosher, we, kosher falls in the category as a, of a chok. A chok is a law that really doesn't make sense. People try to make kosher as if it makes sense. And they say there's health benefits and things like that, but it's really not the reason for kosher. In fact, tomorrow if we find out that pig's the best thing for you, right, since mom and apple <laughs> pie and it'll make you live an extra hundred years, we're still not going to do it. So it's right. not about health. Um, it falls in the And Shabbos? Shabbos is also, actually, you're right, it's also, I believe it's a chayk as well, but it's easier to find a way to communicate it. So you, can, can we find the benefit in living mindfully? Absolutely. And that's what kosher does. Now, you be a vegan and find the same mindfulness. Right, exactly. All right? But, uh, and you're probably going to be kosher, more or less, except for the, the bugs and the lettuce, <laughs> Right. But right. if you're a real vegan, you don't want to eat the bugs and the lettuce, yeah. right? So, I mean, 
I think there's a lot of beauty everywhere. And yeah, no, not everything I understand fully and not everything I'm comfortable with. And there's things I struggle with in my own uh, faith and understanding. And I don't mind discussing that with someone. And I'm comfortable discussing that with someone in my community uh, or someone from the who's religious and says, you know, I struggle with this. I have no problem saying, yeah, I do too. Because guess what? The whole Gemara is a bunch of rabbis talking about what they struggle with right. and, 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 and uh, questioning and, and, and finding the truth um, that, that connects to them, to, to make sense for them, not just say these are the laws, believe it. Right. So, I mean, that's uh, I, I see so much beauty in Yiddishkeit. And, and talking to the audience of people who've been jaded by it. I think that a lot of people have become allergic to religion um, because of their experiences. Many times it has to do with people, not the religion. Um, people who represent the religion. Also. Yeah. And sometimes in the name of religion. Yeah. Meaning they'll say it in the name of religion. Yeah. They'll say they're acting in the name exactly. of religion. Exactly. And, and it could cause some very deep trauma. Um, and I've seen a lot of that. I've seen a lot of that in different teachers growing up in my home. I did, I had a very happy, uh, Yiddishkeit was always presented in, in a loving way. Personally, I'm blessed that it was, but you know, in, in the yeshiva system, definitely a lot of times there's a lot of guilt and a lot of things like don't ask questions. Yeah. I was going to ask you, you, you said you went through a period of time where you asked a lot of questions and asked questions teachers. How was that yeah. received? Uh, most of the time it wasn't received very well. And, and in my teenage years, I wasn't necessarily, I was one of those young people that were very much questioning, like, is this, this doesn't make sense to me. Um, there was one particular rabbi that really started to answer questions, and I would give him a lot of, uh, I would give him a lot of the credit for getting, taking the patience. Do you want to name him? Sure. Be nice. You know who it is. Who? He's very famous. Ed? Yossi Jacobs. Oh, okay, yeah. So you take yeah. the time to answer. Uh, Absolutely. Nice, beautiful. Right. And you know what? Better than any answer he ever gave. And a lot of the answers I wasn't necessarily happy right. with. But he was a teacher in Chayvavay. He was a teacher before he was a yeah, world-renowned right. speaker. He was started a little bit. There was a group of like, I don't know, like nine, 12 of us. And he was our Rebbe. Right. I must have been 17, 18. And in my head, I like checked out of, Personally, I like checked out of like, you know, uh, Judaism from a perspective of like, there was a lot of questions and doubts and things I struggled with. And like, it just, at least the people who were teaching me at that time, I didn't give a lot of value to what they were saying. Right. And, but when I started asking him the question, more than anything, he allowed the question. And I think that's very important to allow the question. To, that's the first step. Yeah. And then... Obviously, there's he gives he gave wonderful answers, but it, it allowed me to to say, okay, this is normal, this is good, this is not there's nothing broken with you, because you're you're asking the question. There's something broken with you if you're not asking the question. Right. It, there's something very, um, it feels weak, not being able to handle a question. Like it feels insecure. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Coke is the best, but you can't try Pepsi. Right. I taste taste everything. <laughs> They say everything, you come back home. So, so what would you say to those people more jaded by Judaism? What is your message if, if you're trying to convey to them? And it's not only Judaism, in fact, right. like you said, it's actually religion. Many people have, have very negative associations. I'm sure there are people who have negative experiences with priests and as a result have a negative feeling towards an Orthodox rabbi. Sure. So what do you, yeah. what do you say to them? People have bunch all religion together. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think the first thing is to first of all listen to their story and many cases probably validate their story because I bet you one of the reasons they're running far away is because no one's ever done that. And when I say validate, like there's a lot of room for validation for someone who had questions that weren't answered, who had someone who was harmed or abused in any way. So many times just being a person, uh, you know, a rabbi and listening and validating, that could be very very, very powerful. Sometimes you don't have to do more than that. Right. And really look at the person and tell the person, you're right. That was wrong. Or your question's a good question. I struggle with that question too. That's very powerful. Um, and I, I would, the next step I would say is to, if the person's open to it, to say, you grew up with one 
um, small view of Judaism. Many times it's from a group that says this is the only way. You know, Moses had a fedora. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Moses had a kippah sergo. Moses had a strimal. Right? Many times that's the, the teaching. So like it's, it's this to just show that within Yiddishkeit, and I mean within traditional Judaism, there are so many flavors. There's so many styles. Um, and there's so much beauty. And encourage the person to experiment. Go try a bunch of different shows. Like, just try it out. Don't run away from everything. You don't have to drop everything because you're not comfortable with one mitzvah or one community. Um, and uh, if a person's opening to, open to do that, I've seen people that, like, you know, they ended up saying, you know, I don't know, Breslov, that talks to me. Or, right. you know, and look, I did find people that found a way to connect to Hashem after leaving everything. And to me, a person that, you know, you're putting on, in, you're putting on tefillin, you're doing one mitzvah, there's value in that. There's beauty in that. Beautiful. I hope you could return and return to a... Uh, a, uh, a from lifestyle style, that would be nice, but you could do something. You could still f feel connected. You don't have to run away from everyone or from yourself. 